This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Okay, uh, let's get going to our world title <laughs> yeah. match. Uh, Undertaker has been named the number one contender at the last months in your house, caused a major backstage stare down between Diesel and the Undertaker. Tensions were already high. And then before the match, Diesel, who's leaving the Rumble, meets the Undertaker in the aisle, and Diesel shoves Paul Bear, which causes the two to square off, and officials pull him apart. It pretty much gave away the finish, I guess. But, dude, this was awesome. Like, I don't know why we haven't seen more of this, but one guy coming from the back and the other guy, I like that. That's a really cool little subtle thing that makes sense. Right? Yeah, it, it, it did. And I thought it was natural and felt good. Let's talk about our main event. Boy, it's going to be a barn burner. I really like this match. I know that Meltzer didn't love it. He didn't really like the finish. He gave it two and three quarter stars. But I don't think Undertaker and Brett ever had a bad match. Uh, Brett was just phenomenal here. They go 28 31. Undertaker gets the win by DQ. Undertaker's dominating early, uh, but Brett's pulling out all the stops. Eventually, of course, there is going to be some interference and whatnot. Um, I should mention, too, Bear is holding up the new urn, supposedly for melting down Kamas chains, which is a little fun. And to my surprise, Undertaker even gets a few boos, which I was kind of shocked at. Um, Meltzer would say at some point the match started to drag a little bit. And eventually, as you know, Diesel's going to come out, grab the ref. It looks like it's over, by the way. The Undertaker makes a comeback, hits the tombstone pile driver. The ref's about to count three. Diesel grabs the ref, throws him out of the ring. The ref calls for a DQ. And Meltzer would say the match was dull in spots, but had excellent psychology and built into a good match. But the horrible finish just killed it. I kind of like the idea of them building towards diesel undertaker, but I understand as a purist, you know, oh man, I paid $30. I want to finish, but it kept me. The match was good enough. I forgave it. What say you? I, I love the whole thing. The whole story, because you started off with the little undertaker diesel confrontation with shoving Pooh bear, uh, and end up with diesel come back and basically giving him fuck you to undertaker. It was, I thought wonderfully told. And you, you saw what Brett had to do. Still, I, I thought, you know, still did the crowd turn on Brett a little bit? Sure. They did because undertaker was as popular as undertaker was. And it's kind of hard to, to be a baby face against the undertaker, especially during this time. So the finish made a shitload of sense. It's diesel fucking shit up. Cause he's pissed off. And that was the story. Let's, uh, let's remind everybody at this point, we've, we've traded stolen title chances. So the idea here is diesel and undertaker have both cost each other a title win building to their WrestleMania encounter after the show. There's a series of interviews with diesel, Shawn Michaels, undertaker, Vader, and diesel's doing the Ric Flair saying that fans learn to love me because I'm the best thing going today. And in the background, you could hear people clapping and saying, woo, but the idea is he's a tweener and maybe he borrowed a line, but all of that combined with the middle finger, this might be the coolest. The diesel character ever was right. Absolutely. And I, and it was that edge that people were able to, you know, I, I think that in many ways, goddamn, he was more baby face than anything here. You know, yes, it was, oh my God, it's a heel thing because he's going against the undertaker and all this other shit. There wasn't anything he said and or did that wasn't justified and true. Meltzer would say coming off the big ratings loss the previous Monday, a lot of people seem to expect an inspired effort across the board out of the rumble. While the results of the three key what? matches were largely predictable going in with the possible exception of the gold dust, IC title victory over razor Ramon, every match on the show fell below what would have been expected out of the match going in on paper. Uh, it was also another step in what appears to be the new direction, stiffer blows, higher risk matches, and a general lack of psychology and focus to the matches of the WWF. The show began with a disclaimer saying that due to the graphic nature of the show, that parental discretion is advised. And then it went right into a shot of Sonny in a bathtub. So I sort of alluded to that earlier that she was on the open of the show. 
I guess I didn't realize this is the first time maybe that happened. Do you remember there being sort of a paradigm shift in January of 96 of, okay, new year, new me type of thing. Cause it does feel like with the tweener character and some of the gold dust stuff and the disclaimer with Sonny, the middle finger, maybe we're trying some stuff. Yeah. And you know, it was, it was attitude and, and, and it was before we even got to the attitude, uh, era, but it was try you know, trying to do something different and get out there with it and change the way that we had traditionally done a lot of the business. I think you've told us this story before, but I don't know if it's the same scene. Is that disclaimer that plays at the front of the show where Sonny saying parental discretion is advised? Was that shot in your tub? No, that was a different shoot. That was a different shoot. No, Sonny never made it into my, my tub ever. I, there was heat with, uh, someone in your house and her, right? Well, uh, she never made it into my tub ever. Okay. So no, they actually spent, no, no. Chris and Sonny actually spent that, spent the uh, night at my house one night. Well, who did, who did somebody in your house not like? No, it wasn't that they didn't like them. It was just that, 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 they, that they didn't, uh, had an attitude. No. Well, no, okay. it was a different shoot. We'll move on. Um, most would also say the show was more violent than the past WWF standards, mainly with foreign objects being used liberally, which had recently been a no, no, although no blood for the most part, the work rate was below the level of most of the shows in 95. Although the matches had more high risk moves, although the crowd appeared dead on television, uh, there, it was said to be live. It was just poor crowd miking, and they were pretty hyped up about this. How big of a deal is that for your live presentation? crowd miking me and you've never really talked about that before. Of course, these days, I think we're just playing loops on a video game. Cause we're in the pandemic era and it is what it is in years past. WCW used to sweeten the crowd noise. I think is the technical term, but if you don't have the crowd miked, it can really take the viewer out of it at home because it almost becomes monkey. See monkey do like a mirror effect. If they're into it, we're into it. Right. Well, it helps for any time. And if you can visually see the audience, involved in something and having a good time and being excited about it, you're going to be excited about it no matter what you're doing. So it's, I didn't really notice. Uh, I mean, maybe the, uh, the expertise of the guy making that critique with all the television shows that he's produced and, and the hot crowds that he's produced at every single one of the shows he's ever promoted and or book. Wait a minute. God damn it. Um, yeah, I, I really, I thought they were into it. I think that the, I thought they were good, <laughs> actually. Let's, uh, let's do some questions here. Oh, before we do, I want to mention, um, Dr. Jeffrey Unger did an interview saying Shawn Michaels was 100% fine and fully recovered a few weeks earlier in the angle. He was saying Michael shouldn't ever return to pro wrestling. Michaels in his own interview, announcing his return said he was doing so against the wishes of his doctor in hindsight. Was that a little, uh, misstep and continuity? Probably so. Yeah. Shit happens. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. So you get a notice anytime we upload some new content and go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com.